You know, my journey uh, began prophetically about a month after I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I heard the audible voice of God, and uh, that was my first encounter with knowing that God had spoken to me. And basically, I'm still living out the word that God spoke to me when I was 16 years old. But not too long after that, I went off to Bible college and uh, began to live this spirit-filled journey. And I began to have prophetic dreams that I would see something in a dream, and then I would get up and I would pray, I would intercede, and the dream would happen, but it would happen without the disastrous outcome that I had seen happen in the dream. So this happened multiple times and kind of got my attention um, regarding that God was actually speaking to me. I went to the Word, and I found that there's over 50 occurrences in Scripture where God spoke to somebody through a dream or a vision. And up, up to that point in the late 70s, early 80s, I had not heard anybody say anything about God speaking in a dream or a vision. And so, of course, my whole foundational scripture was really Acts chapter 2, and I began to understand that God wants to speak through prophecy, which is hearing what God says and saying what God says, but then he also wants to speak um, in the language of seers, which is dreams and visions as well. And this is not just for prophets. This is not just for people that are called to the fivefold ministry gift of a prophet. But really, this is also for those that um, that are filled with the Holy Spirit, because it says, "In the last days, I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams." And so, these are the manifestations of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Now. Not too long after that, I married into the Hammond family, and uh, uh, Bishop Hammond is uh, actually known as the father of the modern prophetic movement, and so I got to be a part of that whole birthing season of birthing the prophetic voice and training people, equipping people to hear the voice of God, and Bishop Hammond is more of a, what we call a Nabi prophet. There's different words that are translated prophet. One is Nabi, which has a base word that means to bubble up, so in other words, we were trained, you lay hands on somebody and the word of the Lord bubbles up inside of you. You don't see anything necessarily. You open your mouth and you let it flow. So I was a seer prophet trained by a Nabi prophet. Um, and, and so as bubbling up was occurring, as the Nabi prophetic anointing was occurring, the Roe or the Chose, which are the, the words for seer, um, actually was operating. So as it would bubble, I would start seeing pictures, I would start seeing visions, I would begin to take those things that I was seeing and then translate them into the, the, the Nabi prophetic flow. Um, God has always spoken to me through dreams. God continues to speak to me through dreams and visions. Um, I'm, I'm actually very um, visual in how the Lord speaks to me. And God will give me prophetic dreams that will uncover things that are happening in nations. Uh, God will give me visions in times of worship or times of seeking the Lord. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll get to this later, but the, the whole time that we're in right now, the Lord gave me some visions about earlier this year. And I just believe that it's time for the entire body of Christ to be equipped to both hear the voice of God as he speaks to them personally, but also to understand that it's, it's, it's not necessarily necessary to get spooky spiritual or fall into a trance. I mean, that's, that's a biblical thing too, but you don't have to fall into a trance or go into another realm to actually receive pictures or visions or revelation from the Lord. I just want to just close this part by just saying that I love the word revelation because in the Greek, it's the word apokalupsis. And apokalupsis, apo means to take away, and kalupsis means the curtain or the veil. And so what we're doing when we're seeing into the realm of the spirit is that we are removing the curtain or the veil that obscures our vision from being able to clearly see or clearly hear things. And so I, my heart and my passion is to see people equipped to hear the voice of the Lord, whether they're hearers, whether they're seers, whether they're feelers or sensors, God speaks in a, in a variety of ways. And when I train seers, I talk to them about seeing in the spirit. I talk to them about learning how to wait on the Lord, get in his presence and wait patiently for the Lord and keep looking. God may give you a vision, but you need to keep looking and, and see if the vision's over. Keep looking, keep looking until God speaks everything and shows you everything that it is that he wants you to see. So whether it's through a dream of the night or a vision during times of the presence of the Lord or times even that God might catch you unaware, uh, God is looking for ways to speak and communicate to his people. And these are some of the different ways. And I love training people in all of them.
Yeah, Apostle Jane, I love that. I actually, while you were saying that, I was thinking about the Watchman prophet. Do you have yeah. like a, mi a minute or two that you can share really quick? Because I feel like there are going to be people watching yeah. and they really need to know what the Watchman prophet is in this season. So that's actually the fourth dimension of the prophetic that I, that I teach on when I teach on the seer gift, and it's the Shamar prophet, which is translated as the watchman. And I am a watchman, so a lot of times what I am actually seeing is I'm either seeing angelic strategies, demonic strategies, uh, like Elisha saw into the realm of the spirit and was able to see what was transpiring in the realm of the spirit. I think that there's probably a lot of seer watchman prophets that are gaining revelation so that we understand how we can properly position ourselves to bring heaven into the earth realm uh, to Jesus taught us to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven but if we're not understanding what's happening in the heavenlies um, both from the angelic armies as well as in the second heavens from demonic strongholds and demonic strategies uh, spiritual assignments uh, God brought me up in all of that and I can remember the first time Bishop Hammond asked me to identify a spiritual stronghold um, he basically said, you know, this is what I want you to do. Go in behind the veil, you know, g you know, g seek the Lord and, and, and God will show you. And, and uh, it sounded so spooky spiritual. And I was like, I have no idea what any of that means. And basically, I just began to pray in the spirit. I actually had six children in the car and they were back in the back being crazy and I'm praying in tongues and all of a sudden I could see the name of the spiritual stronghold and when I went and looked it up phonetically in Hebrew it was exactly what we had talked about that morning the exact characteristics of the demonic spirit so in that particular case I actually saw the name spelled out and then was able to take it and develop devise a spiritual strategy that we were able to use to take it down so there's there's a lot of different ways that God will use the watchman anointing through the seer gift um, to be able to alert us to both the enemy's plans, but also alert us to with the activity of angel armies so that we can know how to properly align with them. Wow.